watching this video. We're gonna see all these boxes being unboxed. Today we're gonna unbox the Kato HO track you see here. I'll let you guys know what I think and show you all of what comes inside those boxes. This is all the stuff we bought for our HO layout that we're building in the garage. This one is going to be the outside loop. This one is the inside loop. Yeah. We're having a crossover between two of these loops right here. The switch, the siding will be on this one. And we have all these extra straights. So let's, let's open them up. All the videos for building this train table are available in our playlist on our channel. This includes building the table and eventually building the individual set pieces on the table. Don't forget to smash that like button and hit that notification bell. Ding ding! Hit it like a train bell and let's get rolling! First up is the Kato HM1, also known by 3 slash 104. It is a loop track that also includes a power pack and a railer. On the back it shows all the different items that will come with it and it will also show suggested layouts that you can get by purchasing other sets that they have. I can't read the back of the box because I believe it's in Japanese but it does have metric units on it uh, so you can get some information from it. It tells you the dimensions of this loop track which is 2366 millimeters by 1382 millimeters. It has an inventory of all the items that come with it. So there are seven straight pieces at 246 millimeters. There's one straight piece for the same 246 millimeters, but that has the power cord attached to it. There are 16 pieces of the curve track, which are radius 670 millimeters. And then it also lists the power pack and the railer. On the right side of the box, it shows different suggested configurations you can make from the different sets that they have. They're all listed by that little code, like HM1 plus HV2 would make a basic track with a siding. So let's go ahead and open it up. As you can see, it's packaged pretty neatly. Everything's tightly fit in there, very well protected. Comes with a manual. The power pack, the straight pieces, the spray pieces look pretty nice. They're hand painted to look pretty realistic for a plastic train set. There is the power rail. This box just contains the wall plug, standard two socket wall plug. Has all the curve track, the railer, and that's it. Here's a close up of the power pack. It is very light. It has, but it has really sturdy knobs. It has the forward, the reverse, and the brake setting. And then uh, the right one does the power. On the side, it has an adapter for hooking up accessories, like switches. On the back, it has the connector to the wall and reset button and the connector to the power rail. Here is a close-up of the manual. It folds open and on one side is instructions in I believe Japanese and the other side is instructions in English. The starter guide has information about the different sets available, basic starter information about joining your sections together, how to connect your power pack together, connecting turnout control switches, how to use the turnouts, how to set the different power routing and non-power routing modes in the turnouts if you have them, re-railing train cars, running motorized cars, storing of the equipment, 
a basic troubleshooting area and maintenance of the track and the train cars. Also additional information about the jointers they use. Next up is the HV1 set. It is the outside loop. Even though it is a bigger loop, it is in a smaller package because it doesn't have that additional room for the train set. On the back, it has the same information. On the left, it has a inventory of what you get. And on the right, it has different configurations of the sets. And it is mostly in Japanese. Opening the box up, you can see it is also very clean and neatly presented. Everything's tightly in there. Uh, all the boxes I got from Kato came that way. It also includes an instruction manual which has an additional pamphlet in it about the HV1 track. And inside the box, there's pretty simple. You got your straight pieces, your curved pieces, and a railer. You also receive a straight piece that you can connect to the power pack. Here is HV2, the siding track. We intended to have two sidings, but at the time of making this video, we only had one come in the mail. Uh, the other one was on a back order, so you will not see it in this video. The back of the box has all the standard information as all the other ones. So let's go ahead and open it up. Here's a close-up of the manual switch. This is actually the one I had a little problem with. Uh, all the other manual switches worked fine, but this one seemed to not work out of the box. I believe it got some dust or some kind of particle inside of it that made it stop moving because I opened it up and I used canned air to and moved the switch back and forth, and eventually I got it to work. This one I got from a Japanese reseller, so it might have been used, although it was listed as new. But it wasn't a big deal because I was able to fix it pretty easily. Other than that, I didn't seem to have any problems with any of the Kato stuff I bought here. Here's the additional instructions. It shows you a layout of the different where the different pieces go in the set. So let's go ahead and put it together really quick. You start off by putting a curve piece on the top and that makes these sections parallel again. And then it's just about putting the parallel pieces together until you get to the reverse side. Everything snaps together pretty easily. You just push it straight in. There's no confusion about whether it's in or not. It's either in or it's not. And there you go, less than two minutes, you can put it together. It's pretty simple. So next up is the Kato HV4. It is a powered switch track. I also have the HV3 switch track. The difference between the two is the HV4 is more gradual and the HV3 is more abrupt on the switching. Keep in mind if you want to switch between your two train loops without backing up, you will need something different. They don't actually sell a set in the reverse of these two. You'll have to buy the individual pieces and then set it up yourself. On the back it has the layout as every other one, so let's go ahead and just open it up. Here we go. We got the instruction manual for the switch. The blue piece in the center is the powered switch. You push it into the side of the power pack and it gets its power that way. And then on the back is the connector to the switch. Pretty simple. The little blue box is a distributor. It sends the signal to switch to the two different switches. And here are all the pieces. It also comes with the insulated unit joints, so if you want to insulate the two circuits between the switches, you can do that. So you can run two different uh, DC power packs on each side. The small pieces have an area which goes narrower 
on the side, you need to face that into the switch to make it work. And once it's all lined up, it goes in pretty easily. The little triangle road bed is a little hard to get in the right place, but once you do, it goes in very easily. You do not need to force it. These little road bed pieces are easy to lose, so be careful with them. There is also a manual switch if you want to manually control the switches. So you plug one cord into each switch and then you plug both of those into the blue box. Then you plug that into the powered switch. And that is the completed HV4 powered switch. And here is the HV3 powered switch. It works pretty much the same as the other one. On the back it has pretty much the same as any other box. So let's just go ahead and open this up. You set it up the same as the other one. The only real difference is it switches over between the tracks in a shorter distance. That's why it has a couple straight pieces on the end. So now we'll just go through a time lapse of setting up the track. We already have one of the sidings out. At first I took out the curve track from the inside loop HM1 and I made four equal turns and then I did the same with the outside loop HV1 and with that I filled in the rest of the things I had to make the largest possible track I could. The radiuses of the two curves work perfectly so that the straight pieces start at the same point on both tracks. And the spacing between the two loops is the same spacing as HV2, HV3, HV4, all the accessories just kind of fit. We had a delay in getting the second siding, so you will not see it in this video, but we just put it right next to the one siding we have out, but on the inside loop. Compared to the lifelike track I had before, this track is just so much better. We rarely have derailments. If we do, it's usually on that one switch that we had problems before. Some of the rolling stock that I stopped using on the other track, because they always derailed, don't have a problem anymore on this track. There are two main things I would have done differently. First is instead of buying the second switch set HV4, I would have just bought the individual pieces to reverse HV3. That way I wouldn't have to reverse my engine to get it from one track to the other. Secondly, I would have bought the pieces to extend the inside siding around a curve and connect it on the back end. That way I would have been long enough to fit a big train on a siding. These uh, sidings I have just kind of fit uh, additional rolling stock on the side and maybe a train or two. I've been using the track now for over two months and I'm very happy with it. I would recommend this track for anyone looking for snap track to use for their train layout. So the next thing we're going to do for our track is build a mountain and probably a tunnel. It's gotten a little too cold in the garage right now to work on it. It's the middle of winter. So the next train video may take a little longer to come out. But when it does, we'll start working on scenery. See you guys next time.